Hello and welcome to the show. Now, whether you like it or not, the Renault Espace was actually a really rather influential car. It came out in, I think it was 1984, and was kind of one of the first big people carriers. Well, nowadays everyone builds SUVs. Uh, the Espace was quite the trendsetter when it appeared, and Renault were certainly keen to do mad things with it. Of course, the most notorious, the most remembered, was when they decided to put a Formula One car engine into the Espace, because why not? And I like that sort of engineering. I like that sort of engineering. So today what we are going to do is put a stupidly powerful engine in a people carrier. However, we're going to try and do it long before Renault came up with that idea. Using 1990s technology, we are going to try and make a kind of hypercar variant of a people carrier. There's also a kitten squeaking at the door. We've got some new cats, some of you might know. Uh, and they are exploring the house. I don't think you'll be able to hear her. And Eve is quite the explorer and quite the squeaker. She wants attention and she will let you know when she wants attention. Either way, yes. Renault with, well, let's say a spas. We're making a silly, silly spec a spas. Now, bodywork wise, we're going to go for fiberglass. This is not going to be a normal production everyday sort of a vehicle. This one, it is going to be a, a special, uh, I mean, I'll be, it would be fun if I could make this into a track car category of vehicle at the end of it. I don't think I could. Um, we're not, uh, do we go full on carbon fiber for the chassis? Uh, let's, no, let's, we'll, we'll go with, we'll go with steel, I think. Uh, let's go with corrosion resistant steel. Front, front, sorry, longitudinal. We will be wanting uh, as much space as we can. We want to get a decent size. I'm not building it to a specific, you know, 90s V or 90s Formula One spec engine. I'm just going to build whatever engine I fancy. <laughs> Basically, that's the way it's going to work. Uh, do we go double wishbone all round or do we go for... Uh, maybe we'll go some multi-link at the rear rather than going full on, full on push rod. Now I'm going to try and keep the quality sliders in the middle. I'm going to see if I can make it even a, a tall, obtainable sort of a vehicle rather than just quality slider spam. I'm kind of fancying. Do we go for a big V12? I haven't built a big, big V12 in a while. Shall we go for a big, a big V12? A well, I mean, it, it makes sense really to go with the uh, five. Uh, valves, dual overhead cam, maximum RPMs out of it, because, you know, we want maximum RPMs. It's going to be an all-aluminium engine in here. Uh, five litre? I mean, it seems it's actually quite... The, the, <laughs> the engine bay is quite... We might go for an even bigger engine. We will see what the engine bay fill is going to be like by the time we are finished. It's going to be a big old uh, mad... Vehicle, so we'll have you know billet steel, lightweight forge. We'll go forge. Now, of course, 1990 we didn't have the titanium stuff that we do on the ultra modern vehicles. Uh, sure, we've got variable valve timing as well. So yeah, we are you know a tad more limited on stuff. Uh, yes, a 12,000 horsepower. In, um, <laughs> that's a lot. I don't think you can get that much power, uh, even if you are unbelievably. Jesus, look at the size of that intercooler. Um, that's quite mad. I oh, say so we've got to change it. So if we can have it like there, and it, is there an intercooler there? Ah, there we go. Okay, 49 horsepower gets you an intercooler in there. <laughs> That's quite fun. Okay, maybe we won't go for all, all of that, because if, well, if we do that, it, it, it does just fit, but only, only just. Maybe we go with about eight. Well, well, we'll see how much horsepower we get at the end of the day. Of course... You know, we're going to go for all of this sort of stuff. I uh, will keep it super so that it can, you know, at least be bought. The petrol can at least be bought in a, you know, petrol station, etc. Uh, exhaust diameter is probably going to want to be pretty sizable. Has got to be road. Well, we're going to try and make it very vaguely road legal. <laughs> we'll see about that, though. We will. We will see about that. Okay, so compression is on the. Uh, well, a little bit on the high side initially, right? So, but starting off with the kind of the baseline we've got here is about 640 horsepower. Uh, we can run that up a little bit more now. Ooh, we're gonna we're gonna want to have a little tinker around with ooh, the various bits and pieces. I should have to be a little bit careful that I don't get myself to a point where <laughs> we've got compression at all sorts of uh, wonky. Uh, wonky points. So fuel mixture. Now, I mean, like miles a gallon is going to be pretty 
awful on this car. You know, it's actually got a nice amount of torque as well, which I like to see. Uh, we're not able to quite push it. I mean, we are, we are limited by how far we can we can push these engines. Jeez, that's a lot of. Okay, so the Conrads are now starting to have issues. Uh, it might actually be. I think the Conrods might not actually be able to survive this amount of torque that we've got going on. Uh, these are, I mean, if we've got heavy duty. Okay, so heavy duty will work. The RPM isn't too high for them, so we can get away with some heavy duty Conrods in here. Okay, we're at like 830 horsepower. Now, what else can I get? Oh, so if we give the boost, if we up the boost. We then have to lower the compression to, for it to survive up to 900 horsepower. And I, you know, remember, at the end of the day, I'm going to be trying to drive this vehicle. I've got to try and make this somehow drivable. I'm not sure how I'm going to manage that one, but it is going to have to be somehow usable in all of this. Uh, so if we if we up the intercooler. Uh, we're going to have to lower the compression again on this. Holy crap, we are past the 1,000 horsepower mark. We're past the 1,000 horsepower mark. Again, this is not with quality sli slider spam. Well, of course, you can do that, and I'm sure there are better ways of building this engine. I have absolutely no doubt. It's not a mad revy engine, actually. This is uh, more torque than I normally get out of my vehicles, I'm going to be honest with you. Even with turbos, it's not the worst power band I've ever built. Uh, <laughs> It's really not the worst power band I've ever built, which is surprising because this is me we're talking about here. Um, yeah, 1,061 horsepower up there. I would like to be able to probably push it any more on... I guess I could up, maybe up the sliders a little bit on these. So if I push it any more in terms of uh, RPM, the Conrad's have an issue. But because of the torque we've got, we need to have the heavy-duty ones. So I think we're going to probably have to sit around there. What a shame, 1,061 horsepower in our people carry. Let's give it a listen, shall we? <laughs> that is not the sort of sound you expect. That is not the sort of sound that you expect out of a people carrier. And I'm okay with that. I'm very, very okay with that. So, that is our engine. <laughs> it's going to go in this. This is going to be a thousand horsepower. The, the real, the real tough... i say the real tough here. Can I make this even vaguely drivable? Will it even vaguely, vaguely work in terms of... I, I think I might be able to do it. I mean, it's, it's not going to be easy, but I might be able to do it. Uh, so I mean, it's fairly, fairly straightforward bodywork. Shall we go with, we go with a fence? Jeez, <laughs> I forget how offensively. You know what? Sure, we'll go with a bright, offensive blue vehicle. Why not? Why not? Indeed. Oh, this might be one. We might have got a vehicle that is going to allow us to use the... I've wanted to use these headlights for ages, but not very many body styles work with these. Okay, maybe not quite all that way across, though, because the indicator light goes a bit funky. Yeah, trying to get these uh, lights to work on anything, uh, it just doesn't happen. Well, I, I say it doesn't happen. I have seen a few vehicles, but they, they need to kind of have a very, very narrow front, and, well, this vehicle suits that style perfectly. I mean, we might as well go... So we might as well go for... It makes sense to have one of these grills. Uh, we'll move this forward so that we have a little grill in the middle of all of that. And then, what can we do further down? I guess we could just have... I don't know if we need... What's it going to look like with... Uh, <laughs> don't know if we need sort of multiple... Oh, I'm not sure I like that at all. Oops. Um, yeah, I don't have a need like the whole three, the normal sort of three grill setup that I end up applying to a lot of my cars. I know the Kia one will look like uh, down on down on this lower part at the front. Um, no, definitely, definitely not sure on that. Wonder if we go as ever when I'm building a car on here. This is something that you can just spend so long faffing about with, just getting it looking how you want it to. Not sure I actually like the lower the lower grill part. Uh, can, I wonder what happens. I'm just pondering where do the lip, because like the, the, where the front bumper on this sits is a little, I think I actually prefer that. Like the, the normal front bumper sits at a little bit of a wonky angle I find 
I say I, I find on this, I think, for certainly how I've styled it. Okay, I mean, it's not, it's, it's certainly not the uh, prettiest of cars. Uh, <laughs> however, we are an eco little people carrier here. There, we are, we are sensible. Oh, you're going to do the funny thing where it doesn't let me put the... No, okay, we'll come back to that later. Uh, we are an eco people carrier. We're going to try and sit seven and still be, you know, very, very comfortably fast. So, door handles, of course. We need to be able to get all of the people into the car. Uh, we will need some form of brake lights. I feel like a nice tower. Oh, they don't have a straight tower, though, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, <laughs> I feel like these sort of things, uh, they kind of work fairly well on the back of this. Maybe it's got some bigger some bigger tail lights up there. Can we get might work on here. Just seeing the top bit. Can we get oh we have a tail light at the very top. It's maybe a little bit too tilted, but you know it'll do. Uh, <laughs> exhaust. Shall we go for like a quad just just for a slight giveaway that this might not be a normal a normal vehicle. Shall we go for like a quad quad exhaust? I, I, there's just something fun about having a quad exhaust set up on a car. And we will oh, spawn out a new pair of exhausts and they can sit there. Slightly lower. Uh, is that just a little smidge higher? No, no, that's one too many. There's a set. There we go. I think that's right. Maybe we'll get a little uh, grill or something to house them in, if you like, uh, along those sort of lines. Maybe we'll just make that slightly taller. Uh, <laughs> this, this is just the slightest, the faintest giveaway that it might not be a normal people carrier. We're okay with little little hints that it might not be a normal people carrier. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's it's perfectly economical, everybody. They'll see a people carrier. No one will expect to have a about four miles a gallon thousand horsepower engine in in all of that will they no one no one shall expect it and that's the best thing of, of all do we go for a wing on the back <laughs> bigger question is do we want it to be drivable if the answer is yes we're probably going to want a wing of, of of some sort of description it's not actually quite the sort of wing i wanted do i does, it, does the game have the sort of wing that i want that is a so i'm looking for a Oh, maybe an air... No, that's not the air sort of air dam that I want. That's definitely not it. Uh, I was looking for one that kind of sits... That's definitely not it. Sits... No, that's, I don't remember that one there. It looks like... Uh, no, it's not going to work either. Uh, <laughs> one that kind of just sort of sits snugly. Like, so those bits there come down to the side of the vehicle. I don't think we're going to get what I'm looking for here. Maybe we'll just leave it with a little low-level wing. It looks a tad silly. But I'm going to want some downforce. That's that's the thing. At the end of the day, I'm going to want some sort of downforce along the way. Uh, there's plenty of space on the side here for, for some integration. And all of these lights will work when it comes to importing the car into, into Beam, which is cool. Uh, what wheels shall we go for? <laughs> uh, shall I go for something different today rather than the usual? I don't like many of them particularly. Uh... Should we go for some sort of lowrider style wheels? Or we go for they look like the that wheel looks like it could be a disc on a robot in Robot Wars. <laughs> I think I'll just go with those because I, I know I like them. And have we got everything? We haven't got an aerial, of course. We've got to have an aerial of some description on the car. Oh, wing mirrors as well. Wing mirrors, wing mirrors, wing mirrors. And we will go with sure. Those look like they'll do the trick. <laughs> Such a lot of vehicle. I don't even know. Would you want the wing mirror? You probably want the wing mirrors back there, I guess. Because you I mean, you were, I guess we see it sitting further back there. I don't know. I'm not sure about them. But okay, that's you know, it's it's visually a fairly straightforward, fairly straightforward. It's a people carrier. We are going to absolutely. If, if I wanted to be drivable, I learnt from my. K car that uh, all wheel drive is a good idea. We're not, well, we don't have options for sequentials and whatnot, so it is going to be a five speed manual. It reckons the top speed, it reckons it is capable of 215 miles an hour. I'd probably have put it as the fastest car in the world at that point. 
what was... I mean, the XJ220 was 92, 93 that came around. And did... Yeah, because it was, it was the early 90s, or the late 80s, early 90s, it was the 959, and the uh, F40 were buying, and the F40 did 201, wasn't it? And then the XJ220 did about, two, oh, about 210 in the early 90s, take it away, and then there was the EB110, and then the McLaren F1 kennel, but this would probably predate the XJ by a, just a fraction, so... <laughs> Perfect, we're... I'm incidentally building the fastest car in the world, uh, <laughs> without meaning to, out of a people carrier, potentially. Right, so we are, we're going to need semi-slick tyres, and we are going to need astronomical tyres on this. There's, there's no real question, and it has got the wheel arch space to fit those. I'm still not sure who's buying this car, but I'm fine with it. Like, I'm, I don't, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I, collectors people would buy the fastest car in the world it just it, this wouldn't be looking like a normal one and it would be a hell of a showpiece for any any manufacturer i'm gonna want these to be massive as well because you know <laughs> it's 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 gonna be silly quick you're gonna want some serious braking performance right here and please even that out um but apparently the only warning so far is engine bay is very full and the semi-slick tires aren't the easiest to drive on i mean it's kind of understandable but we're going to want those. Also, the wheels are slightly glitchy if we look at them from the wrong angle. Under tray, sure. Full full clad. We're probably going to want to yoink that up. Uh, I kind of want to keep the rear... I kind of want to keep the wing angles as they are as we've got to have seven seats. That is the rules on this. Uh, let's go sport for some light weight. Uh, I, I mean, if we're going... Should we go... For, we could go for the Veyron style or the Bugatti style of go for high-end stuff. You know, we're, we're going... Might take those off later on. Uh, we're probably going to want some drivability factor in this. Uh, we'll have that as an option if you want it. But of course there is going to be a button to turn it off. Uh, we're probably going to want some advanced safety on a car such as this. Now, we're going to go for... I mean, again, we're, we're after sportiness really. Uh, if we can if we can get it. Uh, it's, it's not going to fit any categories. And I'm very, very well aware of that. It is far too... Like, the, the seat count penalty is going to be massive for the super and hyper cars. You know, seven seats shouldn't work. But I wonder what is going to happen if... Let's just try something. I'm not going to do... I'm not going to leave it as such. But if we were to dump out all of... Yeah, so as soon as you dump out the seats, it becomes a hyper car. <laughs> Basically, no... Well, I, I mean, I, it does make it a little bit lighter. Uh, but, <laughs> so, nobody wants to buy a seven-seat, I don't know why no one wants to buy a seven-seat uh, hypercar. In fact, actually, we can have an eight-seat hypercar. <laughs> okay, we're going we're to ignore this, because this stuff here is kind of not as important as the rest of it. So, 1,061 horsepower from a six-litre twin turbocharged v12 it is not exactly light at 1800 kilos uh, but it's not as heavy as it could be it's not as heavy as it could be now if we go into the so detailed stats we can fiddle around with the suspension a little bit uh, it's not that it was test that's what we wanted we can fiddle around with the suspension a little bit uh, if we want for, for for handling setup and so on but uh, 213 miles an hour, it reckons, is capable in our people carrier. 0 to 60 is going to take about 3.9 seconds. That is an awful, awful lot of speed in, <laughs> in the car. So I am pretty happy. I am pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, the, the question is, do we... I mean, the sportiness is always going to take a toll being... This body style. This body style is very tall, which isn't great for for sportiness. Kind of part of why I, what I'm building here. Uh, it raises about thirty four thousand dollars to build. It's not going to be a cheap vehicle to make, but this is more of a showpiece. While without being, you know, a ten million dollar showpiece. I mean, the real question. It can only tow seven hundred kilos, but the real question, the important question, is: Will it be drivable? And can can it actually do the 213 mile an hour figure will our people carrier be the fastest car in the world
Of course, if we are going to get the people carrier up to the 213 miles an hour, or past the 210 mark, that... And is a speed. I went and had a look while I was changing games at the, uh, the the speed records. 210 was the speed set by the Jaguar XJ220 in 1992. Am I going to be able to beat it? The American Roads is going to be the place that we are going to head to in an attempt. The stability of this van as it starts getting up to the high speeds is my concern. It is already way more controllable than the K car as we hit 150 miles an hour in our people carrier as we change into fifth gear up to 160 miles an hour. I've turned off the traction control and the ABS and so on. So I was all the, the traction control, sorry. So I was curious to see what the van was going to be like to drive. We're up to 180, 190 miles an hour. We are we are about to go faster than the Porsche 959 in a people carrier. It can hold seven. It got airtime at 195. That's terrifying. Come on, come on, great people carrier. You can do this. You can crack the 200 mile an hour mark. Oh, that's a lot of airtime. That's some trees. That's a dead people carrier. Oh dear. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> we've done a very strange thing to the body. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how that one's worked. We've stretched it. We've made a stretched limo variant. Valorous Industries is getting many ideas. Well, to be fair, this is more the motorsport department that's, that's, that's built there. Maybe that's not a good direction of travel. I'm just going to put that out there. I think maybe we go this way. This is the way we were running the front-wheel drive hypercar. Well, this was the start point we were using for the front-wheel drive hypercar. However, I was heading this direction rather than the way we just went. That way is apparently too hilly. The good news is, barring the taking off part, this is eminently more drivable than I was expecting it to be. It's, you know, controllable at 160, 170. It doesn't wander around like the K car. It has got the traction, it's got the stability to do this to get now also we're not looking at the speedo we're looking at the indicator in the middle that's the airspeed that is the middle at the bottom that is a way more accurate indication come on we can beat the f40 you can do it you can do it there we are 201 2 we've got to get 213 to well 210 plus to beat the xj220 with a seven seat people carrier it's 210 come on i need there we go we've done it we have beaten the Jaguar XJ220, a legendary 90s hypercar, and we are 213. We have done it. We have hit. I think we're at 214 now. We might actually be at the rev limiter. 215. It's still going. Maybe it's not quite at the rev limiter. 215 miles an hour. And this is 215 to 16. Perfectly controlled miles an hour. In a seven seat people carrier <laughs> and we can probably slow it down from all of that oh we're going a lot faster than i thought we were uh oh tree time ow main engine broken again oh that's quite nastily wrapped around a tree i will say i mean the, the the frame is standing out pretty well to these to these batterings i guess that's 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 the auto beam cars for you it will do it and I am thoroughly impressed with the controllability of it all. This is yeah, way more controllable than the little than the little K car. It actually does not drive too badly whatsoever for a people carrier. You know, you've got to bear in mind this is a very, very high ride I say high riding. It's gonna have a higher centre of mass than you'd probably want it to. <laughs> in all honesty, it's gonna have a higher centre of mass than is ideal. Again, I mean, look at the shape compared to the XJ220. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to be honest with you. I set out just starting to build a, a silly, a silly people carrier. I wasn't really worried or thinking too much about top speed because I know, you know it's not going to have the great aerodynamics. But just the sheer power of this engine is immense. And again, I thought the controllability would let it down. I did not think we were going to be able to control it at 200 miles an hour. And while a little bit of frame rate lag doesn't help matters, 
button. Sometimes it warps your sense of speed when trying to judge braking points because you're sort of whizzing along here. I was hoping to go down some twistier roads, but apparently we just found another bit of road to do 200 plus miles an hour on. Uh oh, there's some understeer there, which is probably to be expected now that we've actually come to a corner of some description. Uh, it's actually quite a tight, relatively tight corner. We're all over the place a little bit, but there we go. Seven seats at incredible speeds, all the while being controlled. And admittedly, the automation reckons nobody would want to buy it. I don't know, a people carrier that can beat, well, it would have been the fastest car in the world in 1990. I feel like there would have been some. I feel like there would have been some people that would have been quite curious and wanted to purchase a vehicle like this. You also imagine how much it would be worth in today's mad, mad vehicle market. So, <laughs> there we go. That is a bonkers contraption. It does bounce around a little bit under braking. Oh, we've also overheated the front brakes, as you can probably imagine. Near two tons of people carrier travelling at 200 miles an hour. That's a lot of braking it needs to do. Oh, I like it very much. I like it very much. So, <laughs> there we go. An absolutely mad contraption. This time around, though, an eminently drivable mad contraption and one that hits targets I didn't even know I had going into this video. So that makes me happy. That is going to be it for this video, though. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.